Hello, hello, and thank you for joining me. This is a trans moment with Brandy Beckett. Today, I want to talk about what it's like to be a transgender person in these United States in the year 2024. See, I discovered my gender identity when I was 42 years old in 2015. I didn't know most of my life vast majority of my life, I never questioned my gender identity. I didn't know that I should or that I could question my gender identity. I just knew I was not comfortable in my skin. No matter what I did in life, no matter what I was trying to do with that assignment that was given to me, when I tried to fulfill the role of the assignment placed on me as a child, and then as an adolescent, and then as an adult, it never felt right for me. I never felt comfortable in my skin. I never liked me until 2015, when I was questioning everything in my life. And I turned those honest, and earnest questions inward. And I started to ask questions about my own gender identity. And when I looked inside for answers about my gender identity, I discovered that it's feminine. That me, that person in me is a feminine person who I just been felt like for most of my life, I was forced to dress in a costume. I was forced to play a role that I had to, I had to study every day, play the role and in, in try to fit into this boyhood when I was a kid. I didn't really know how to do it that well. I was trying, never felt comfortable doing it. And then trying to fill a role as an adolescent, as a teenager, I was so uncomfortable with my own body. I was so uncomfortable with myself. And I didn't know to ask questions about my gender identity. I just thought I was not a good person or not a happy person. I didn't know to look inside. But in 2015, I did. I asked those hard questions about my gender identity. I realized and discovered that this gender identity in me is not what was assigned to me. And I could not go on trying to portray and trying to build that role that was assigned to me for most of my life. I, I realized, you know what? I can be me. This person that I'm finding inside myself, this woman I'm tapping into, I wanted to express her. And it's all I wanted to do. I remember in those early months of 2015 when I had a burning drive just to tap in and express the femininity that I was reaching within myself. And it felt so natural and so easy and so good for me to start to express that. I mean, sure, I had to adapt to different social norms. I mean, I was indoctrinated into behavior in certain ways. And when I said, well, how do I want to behave? How do I want to express myself? How do I want to look in the mirror and see myself? And how do I want the social mirror to reflect back to me. And in 2015, I decided that I'm, I'm not going to stay in a closet. I'm not going to hide me. I decided that if I discovered this about me and I can accept me for being me, then I'm gonna express it. I'm gonna express me to the world to society, to you. And that's what I have been doing since 2015. 
I've been expressing the woman I tapped into. And it is beautiful. I get such a euphoric high when I feel the femininity in me and I can see that femininity in the mirror on the wall or I can see it in the social mirror when I'm out in public. When that reflects back to me and I see in those mirrors what I see inside myself or something close to it, gender dysphoria slides away and gender euphoria fills my body, my brain, my essence. This has been a journey for me. Discovering my gender identity in 2015 and starting to express it wasn't a simple, easy road. I do not look like this. Oops, I dropped my glasses. I did not exactly have this body back in 2015. I had the body pretty much of a 42-year-old dude. And it took a lot of work. It took a lot of support and it took help. The first thing I did when I discovered my gender identity, I went to a therapist and I was like, yo, I need help. I need guidance. I need guidance to help pull this womanhood out of me. And I need guidance to express it in a way that I feel comfortable expressing me. I had a wonderful therapist who helped me with that. And I was fortunate to have support systems around me. I was in college at the time down in Tampa, but I was in the Honors Institute in this bubble of elite students in the school I was in were amazing students. And they wrapped me in this warm bubble of acceptance in the very unaccepting state of Florida, which I was so privileged and fortunate to have. I was in Florida until December of 2015, January, December, January. I moved up to Massachusetts to go to school at Mount Holyoke College. So I only got to experience Florida for a little while and wrapped in a bubble in this acceptance of these honor students at HCC it was amazing. But I didn't always have the luxury to live inside that bubble, to exist inside that bubble. I had to go out to town in the Tampa and I had to interact with people didn't, and I'm assuming today, still don't understand what it means to be a transgender person, what it means to walk around in society and express who you are in that person not being the assignment you have that you were given when you were born. To say, hey, look, society got my assignment wrong I want to express who I am. This is who I am. To do that in Tampa, honestly, was very scary. I recall walking through the mall of Tampa. That was the test. If you want an honest social reflection on how you're looking, walk around in a mall and walk by young teenagers, preteens, and old elderly people. The geriatric population and the preteen population are brutally honest. And most of my friends said, when you walk through that mall dressed, dressing your gender identity for the first time, it is the most frightening thing. And I got to experience that. Walking in this mall in a skirt and in the top with 
my little stuffed bra, my clumsy high heel boot, my snaggled little fishnet stockings. Felt good when I first opened the door. Walked through that hallway because I went in the back entrance. I didn't go in the main entrance of this mall. I went in through a little back entrance where you have to open the door. And I walked down the empty hallway. It's a strange feeling to catch a glimpse of yourself in a reflection of a window and see the sexy little skirt and a cute little top and think, oh my God, that, that feels good. That looks good. And then you turn your head. And there's a group of five to six, 11 to 13 year old children who have no issues with laughing in the face of someone they don't understand. Or appreciate. Or just their ignorance. But walking past a group of laughing children and you know that they're laughing at you and not because you said something funny or you're clever or you made a gesture. No, how you look. Because you went out in public looking different. You know, laugh at you. I'm turning the corner to the food court to have elderly couples misgender me left and right. Be otherized and put to the margins of society in real time is Fucking scary, y'all. Look at me. I read as a white person. Most of my life, I read as a white person. And when I was portraying my assignment as a white cis hetero male, I flowed through anywhere I wanted in society and did whatever I wanted in society, and no one would say anything. I didn't realize what it felt like to be otherized until it happened to me. You think you can sympathize and and see minority groups and go, oh God, I wish I wish they were treated better in society. And then you go on about your business, you go on about your day. And when you're interacting with society, if you're a white cis hetero person, you just flow through it. No worries. You don't see or recognize the privileges you have. I couldn't, I couldn't until they were stripped away from me, until I was otherized, until I was looked at by an entire society as the enemy, as the one to blame for things going wrong in society. That's what we have become. When this fevered political time in these United States, my identity and the identity of millions of transgender people have had our identities, our existence, our rights ripped away from us and used as political theater to scare unexpecting and uninformed voters. Because they want people to be afraid when they vote. They want people to be afraid of brown, undocumented people, and they want people to be afraid of otherwise transgender people. The American way. It shouldn't be the American way. We should embrace all Americans. We should embrace all transgender people. I'm an American citizen. And I've always been treated as such with all of the American citizen rights and privileges all the way up until I was about 42 years old. And when I started expressing who I am, still an American citizen, suddenly those rights became jeopardized. Suddenly my right to exist in society is not as valued as it once was simply because I express who I am because I am a transgender woman. You should not be any merit to knock down my rights any notch. I do 
do not lose any rights. I should not lose any privileges for expressing who I am. I'm an American citizen. You, as an American citizen, should express who you are. You, as an American citizen, should encourage your next generation, your children, your nieces, your nephews, your grandchildren to embrace and express who they are. Because if your loved ones and you are not expressing who they are, what are you expressing? If you're not being honest with yourself and with society, why? Why are you pretending? Are you pretending to fit a role because it was assigned to you? Do you want your children to fit a role because it was assigned to them? Or do you want your children to be the best them that they could be? Do you want your child to express who they are? And do you want to love them for who they are? Do you want to love your nieces and nephews for who they are? Do you want to love your grandchildren for who they are? And allow them to be them. Allow American citizens to express who they are. Whether that reflects with the assignment that was given to them at birth, e.g. their gender assignment, e.g. their sexual orientation assignment. <laughs> if you expect those children to grow up and be molds of their assignment, then you're just looking to raise molds. You're not looking to raise children. If you are looking to love your child for who they are, let them express who they are. If you want Americans to be the best Americans they can be, let them express who they are. Not all of us are cis. Not all of us are heterosexual. Some of us are non-binary. Some of us are trans. Some of us are gay. Some of us are bi. Some of us are asexual. Some of us are poly. We all exist on spectrums of sexuality. And we also exist on spectrums of gender identity. That is part of being human. We exist within these constructs on a spectrum. You probably fall nicely into a binary within that spectrum. Doesn't mean everybody does. Respect someone's gender identity and sexual orientation, no matter where they fall on the spectrum of sexuality and the spectrum of gender identity. And if it does not fit the nice, neat little boxes and columns that you have pre-planned for those people, guess what? That's what life is. We have to learn to love each other for each other, not try to force each other to fit molds that were assigned to each other. I am going to leave you with this thought. Love yourself, but more importantly, like yourself and treat people the way they want to be treated. Bye-bye for now.